Thanks for spending some time with us this weekend. CJAD 800. Here's Ken Connors. Well, Dan Laxer, actually, as Ken Connors enjoys some uh, uh, well-deserved vacation. Um, as if you follow me on social media, you know that I, uh, I'm i really annoying when it comes to the gym picks. And my, my brother, my younger brother, makes fun of me. He says, how do I know you're not just, you know, changing your clothes and it's the same day in the gym? Uh, or you're just posting the same picture over and over again. I try to work out. I try to eat right. Um, and sometimes I hashtag it with fit over 50. Uh, I have a friend who's a bit younger. He hashtags fit at 50. Um, but how different is the solution to the problem when you're over 50 or when you're younger, say my son's age at 17, 18? Uh, Miles Kroll uh, is the owner of Miles Fit, the, uh, the gym on uh, Monkland and NDG, and he joins me. Good morning, Miles. Good morning, Dan. You're probably, uh, the, your day is winding down now, isn't it? <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm an early bird. Yeah. Uh, you get up at what, three? Depends on the day. I try and go to bed early, but I might be up at three, four in the morning. Yes. Uh, okay, fair enough. I won't complain about getting up at 4.30 to come to work. Um, so as as I was saying in, a, in the introduction, um, you know, the... the um, guys in your position, uh, fitness experts, nutrition experts, they, there's a solution. And of course, the solution is different for everybody. But basically, it's about eating right and, and staying in shape. How does that change when you're, say, over 40 or, or over 50? Yeah, so generally speaking, as somebody ages, there's going to be certain considerations. Um, over time, you will lose muscle mass if you don't maintain an active lifestyle your metabolism will go down and the fact of the matter is the longer you've been alive uh, the higher the probability that you might have had a surgery or an injury or an issue or a postural problem so those things will really be the underlying components that will determine and dictate how you set up a workout plan okay um so because you know we used to joke about with my son you know you just look at a barbell and he'll get pumped up um so but when you get into that latter not latter part of life but like in your 40s and 50s is it almost like you're you're constantly chasing after um, being in shape i don't know if what to, i mean to a certain degree i mean someone who maintains an active lifestyle i mean i've seen some 56 year olds who are in better shape than some 20 or 30 year olds yeah um, but with that being said, yes, there are hormonal implications, metabolism implications. Um, and definitely one of the main things is if you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah. So you got to keep an active lifestyle. And I would actually say the older you get, the more you need to work out, the more you need to stay active, not just in the gym, but how you live your life on a day to day basis. Okay, though, so give me a for instance, like if, you know, when, when you're outside of the, you know, when, when if it's not gym time, for example, how, what does it mean to stay in shape? Right, so that could be a bunch of different things. So, for example, you know, parking further away and walking to where you need to be, taking the stairs versus taking the elevator, um, trying to go, you know, hiking on the weekend, walking where you can versus taking your car. Um, those things really add up, and it's about having an overall healthy lifestyle. But being in the gym as well is, is a huge part of the equation and probably a more important part of the equation, actually. It's funny. Nothing annoys me more than when I hear someone talk about, you know, people in their 40s and 50s. Well, you should get plenty of exercise. After supper, go out for a brisk walk. And I go, <laughs> brisk walk? Hit the gym for crying out loud. Yeah, the brisk walk, I always say something's better than nothing. So if somebody's moving, I take my hat off to them. That's better than not going for the walk after supper. But uh, there's another level of staying in shape and staying healthy, and you can get that from going to the gym. And that's why I have my personal training studio, to help people do that. Yeah. Um, the, the, the studio is Miles Fit. It's on Monkland and NDG. Miles Kroll is who I'm speaking with now. Do you, do you get clients who, you know, they kind of approach you sheepishly and say, I want to get in shape, but aren't I past my prime? Aren't I too old to do that? Absolutely. Uh, there are preconceived notions and disempowering belief systems we have. We think that age defines us. Um, and like I said before, age is just a number. So what I try and do when I connect with someone is to get them to realize that and to realize it doesn't matter where you're starting, that just getting started can move the needle and you can radically and totally change your, your physical self uh, by starting the journey. But you got to get started. I, I liked something you posted once on social media recently. You said, start where you are. Mm -hmm. Which... Yeah. Yeah, sorry, go on. Yeah, that's huge. That's huge. I mean, you got to see yourself for where you're at. Um, look at it neutrally. It's neither good nor bad. 
start the journey and then be consistent. But yeah, you got to start where you're at. That's huge. I think it's, it's a great, uh, it's a great uh, phrase. Um, in terms of nutrition, um, yes. for many years uh, since I started working out, I did the whole five small meals a day thing. I ate every two and a half to three hours, tried to keep my protein intake up. Um, but then recently, uh, people started to talk about two things simultaneously. They talked about the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting. So I did, I did some, I did a little bit of reading on both. Um, I didn't go the keto route, um, because people who are doing keto, they cut out fruit and I can't live without fruit. But I, I started intermittent fasting. Um, what are your thoughts on these? Yeah. So there's a lot of different ways to approach nutrition. And in any type of regime, you'll find people where it's worked and where it hasn't worked. Usually where it hasn't worked, you'll get people that will explore other avenues. So someone will have tried, you know, the zone diet didn't work for them, and then they'll end up in the realm of keto or intermittent fasting. Um, intermittent fasting has become quite popular because it addresses the key component to changing your body composition, which is regulating food amount, how much you eat. Most people fail with their nutrition when it comes to changing their body because they're either in maintenance or eating too many calories. So with intermittent fasting, for those of you who might not be familiar with it, it basically consists of fasting for an extended period of time. So a lot of people will skip breakfast as well as, let's say, a morning snack and only start eating at lunch. So, mm -hmm. eat, for example, from noon to 8 p.m., that would be one way of doing it. So for a lot of people who struggle with how much they're eating by shortening the window of food consumption, you'll in turn reduce your calories, which means you'll be in a calorie deficit, which means you'll lose weight. And there's no problem, like for, for example, for people who, who use that method, who only start eating at 12, but they still like to hit the gym in the morning. There's no problem working out on an empty stomach? So there actually is no problem. Some people are very sensitive with blood sugar fluctuations. So there's some people who, if they try and work out on an empty stomach, might feel lightheaded. That might be who they are, and that's a small percentage of the population. Other people, the body just has to adapt, right? If you've been eating breakfast for the last 20, 30 years, that's what your body knows. So anytime you try something new, it's a little bit of a shock to your system. The body says, what's up? What's going on? But ultimately, the body is an adaptation organism. It'll figure out what's up and adapt accordingly. Okay. Um, Miles Fit is, is the gym. If people need your assistance, how do they get in touch with you? Yeah, they can just search Miles Fit, M-I-L-E-S-F-I-T on Google. We're all over social media on Facebook, Instagram. They can give us a call and see what's up. And, you know, we specialize in personalized and customized fitness. So we're not a cookie cutter, regular membership gym. We're really for people who need that individualized approach, want to get it right, want that coaching, want that teaching. I love that you took the time to do this, my friend. Thanks so much. My pleasure, Dan. Nice chatting. You too. Have a great day.